Hi, this PowerPoint is meant to be a makeup lab for the blood group genetics with synthetic blood. You're going to use this PowerPoint to fill in the pre-lab notes and then to fill in the data table of your lab report. First, if you take a look at blood type A, you'll notice that on the red blood cell you have a specific protein called antigen A. Fill in on your data table under blood type A that you find protein or antigen A on the red blood cell. Take a look at the antibodies. If you have A blood, you have B antibodies. Those B antibodies protect your blood in case B blood is added. You'll notice that the shape at the end of the antibodies is different than the protein that's on the red blood cells. Please fill in anti-B antibodies for blood type A. If you have blood type A, there are two possible genotypes, AA or AO. B blood is a little bit different. You have a different antigen or protein on your red blood cells. You have the B antigen. In your blood plasma, you also have an antibody that protects you from A blood. So you have the anti-A antibody. You can have two different genotypes possible if you have B blood. You can be homozygous, BB, or heterozygous, BO. If you have AB blood, you have t the both proteins on your red blood cells. So you have both antigen A and antigen B. Because you have both proteins, you have no need to have the antibodies because the antibodies are searching and wanting to get rid of the other proteins. So you have no antibodies. All you have is proteins on your red blood cell. You're, there's only one genotype possible, and that would be AB. If you have O blood, you have no proteins or no antigens on your red blood cells. Because you have no proteins, your body does not want blood cells with proteins. So you have both antibodies, A and B, in the plasma. O is a recessive allele, so the only genotype possible is homozygous recessive, or two O's. So what happens when a protein comes in contact with an antibody? What happens is the protein, the blood cells agglutinate or clump together. Fill in the definition on your pre-lab question to show that blood cells will clump or agglutinate when the antibody comes in contact with the protein it's searching for. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see examples of where the blood cells have agglutinated or clumped together. So let's look at an example. If we have an unblo unknown blood sample, what type of blood is it? So we add anti-A and anti-B to the well in the lab, and then we take a look at the actual blood cells. So the question is, on the first one, did anti-A agglutinate? The answer is no, because it's still uniform in appearance. There was no change. That means an that anti-A did not find the A antibody. So this cannot have A blood. Did the sample agglutinate with anti-B? The answer is yes. It's no longer uniform, but clumpy in appearance. What that means is anti-B found its target, it found the B protein, and so it agglutinated or clumped together. That means B protein is present. Because of that, we can say that this person has blood type B. B protein was present on the cells, anti-B reacted. So what would it look like if both wells 
looked absolutely the same. That means neither anti-B found its protein and anti-A did not find its protein. So if neither protein is added or is found, that means this has to be O-type blood. So right now, what you should do is read the first two paragraphs of the introduction. After the second paragraph, make a pedigree to show the family. So take a look at the sample pedigree that I have on the board. This is way bigger than what you're going to need to make. You will only have three people in this pedigree after paragraph two. Remember that females are circles, males are squares. You will not do any shading. Pause the video for a moment, make the pedigree, and add each person's name to the pedigree. Now read the next paragraph, paragraph three of the introduction. Now we have a twist. Make a pedigree to show the possible family from this paragraph. It's a little different because we're adding a person. Somebody's making a claim here. Think about before you make the pedigree, what's the relationship of this new person, Daryl? Once you think you have it, please make the pedigree on the space provided in your note pre-lab notes and add the names of the people to the pedigree. You should have a total of four people. Pause the video and please make your pedigree. Now that you've made your pedigrees, you've read the introduction, please write what problem are you working to solve? So by the end of this lab, what are they hoping you can answer in this? Take a moment to write the problem on the pre-lab notes of the lab report. Pause the video while you do that. We're now going to go into lab and we're going to see how we figured out if Daryl is the son of Andrea and John. Now that we're in lab, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the well plate to show each of the four people. So we have John, Andrea, Daryl, and Marlene. I've indicated where I'm going to be adding anti-A and anti-B. So let's start first with John. Direction 1 says using the dropper vial, we're going to add one drop of John's blood to each well. So let's take a look at the bottle, and it says John. So uncapping it, we're going to place one drop into each well and recap the bottle. Number two, we're going to add a drop of synthetic anti-A to the first well and a drop of anti-B, direction three, to the second well. So let's take a look at our, what we have. So here's our anti-A, our blue. So we're going to take and add a single drop. We're going to recap this. And then we're going to add anti-B to the second well. We're going to stir each one with a toothpick and a different toothpick for 30 seconds to see if there's a reaction. So now I've finished putting everybody's blood in. So if we take a look at John, and I'm just going to scroll around so you can see everybody. We've added anti-A to the A well, anti-B to the B well, and stirred. So now we're going to take a look at Andrea. You can see now that there is a difference between in the anti-A and the anti-B well. So we have a change visible. We can see some agglutination. Let's take a look at Marlene. 
their daughter. So Marlene in well A and well B. And then we'll take a look at Daryl in well A and well B. So here we can see another change. So now I'd like you to flip the data table over and you're going to record some answers. So if you look at procedure 6, it says you're going to use the chart and in each box you're simply going to record a yes if there was agglutination or no if there was not. So let's start with John. Look at well A. Was there agglutination or clumping visible? Yes or no? Do the same for John and anti B. A yes means there was agglutination or clumping. A no means there was not. Don't worry about blood type yet. Just record yes or no. Let's go to Andrea. Anti A. Was there agglutination or clumping? Yes or no? Record the answer for anti B. Next we're going to look at Marlene, their daughter. So anti A and anti B. Was there agglutination? Yes or no? Finally we're going to record Daryl. Take a look at these wells, A and anti B, and record Mr. the Horn, answer. Mr. Horn, you are recording yes if there was agglutination, no if there was not. So now let's think about blood type. When we see agglutination, that means that the antibody found its protein. So in the case of agglutinating with B, that means the B protein was found. Take a minute to write people's blood types. A blood type is a phenotype, so you are simply writing whether it is blood type A, blood type B, blood type AB, or blood type O. Good. Now that you've completed the data section, take a minute to do the analysis. Based on the information you found, what is John's genotype? Remember, a genotype has two letters. What two alleles does John have for blood? Answer the same for Marlene. And then you can figure Andrea's blood type out simply by knowing Marlene, her daughter's blood type. Once you have that, fill in the Punnett square for Andrea and John and this will tell you what blood types they can possibly have. When you finish, answer the questions at the bottom and the question to finish with, could Daryl be John and Andrea's son? When you give the results, explain what you found in the Punnett Square. That will help you to give your data. When you're done, you will turn in both the pre-lab questions and the data.